All right, so here we are in the front of the vehicle, and uh, just to give you some context, uh, this is the driver's side. It is, it is a left-hand drive vehicle. There's the AT1011 mount. I don't have the whip attached at the moment. Uh, left-hand drive. And so the idea is I wanted to be able to turn the radios on, control them, uh, and, ma and manage them while I was driving on uh, trips. So uh, what we did is I, we, we uh, designed this plate, this black metal plate, to hold that's the MCS, the master control station, and a loudspeaker. Uh, and that's so that we don't always have to wear a headset with the setup. And of course, you know, we could just grab the microphone uh, and go. I'll probably come up with a more mobile friendly uh, arrangement for the microphone. So what's important to see here, so that's the mass control station. Here, right above my head uh, as I'm driving, is the full featured control station or crew station we'll just call it a crew station uh for the driver and sorry dogs barking uh and this allows me whilst driving let's see if i can get a allows me while let's see if i can get this to focus here allows me to uh decide which radio i want to transmit through uh, which radio I want to monitor or receive from if you can see the word monitor down there uh, Or all so you can listen to actually all radios simultaneously Oops, let me turn this off so we don't blow our ears out uh, So yeah, we can mo listen to all radios at the same time and just decide which to work So in this case, I'd be working 51 megahertz uh, That would be you know 30 to 2000 so you know for your VHF UHF and repeaters, etc. Uh, I don't know why, I don't know how to fix the focus on this camera. Uh, e is not connected at the moment, and F would be the um, HF, at least HF1, and, and this might be HF1 in the future. And then allows you to control the volume. And what you'll notice is, uh, and then of course, the passenger side has the same setup, which allows the, my passenger to operate any of the radios independent of the radio I'm operating. So I could be on HF and my passenger here could be monitor, could be working 51 megahertz or working local repeaters as we drive. Uh, they just pick which radio they wanna transmit or receive from. And as long as I'm not working that same radio, they'll be fine. And they can actually monitor my transmissions and monitor my reception um, if they wanted to th as well. Now, of course, in this case, we have this loudspeaker, and the loudspeaker is going to follow whatever the driver side uh, settings are for monitoring. Uh, but we can always turn that off, and uh, my passenger can do can listen to things on their headset uh, independent of what I'm doing. So, how do you control these radios? Well, uh, so Harris uses uh, the Falcon Two and Falcon Three systems use these very handy uh, remote controls. Uh, I've wired the remotes up back, up to the back. Uh, and I have a second one of these. I just haven't, haven't, to, haven't installed it yet. So one will be for HF and the other be, will be from 20 uh, to 2000 megahertz, or really more likely 512 since I don't have an antenna for anything above 512. But still, that, 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 that'll get me all the VHF and UHF repeaters I could possibly want. So while I'm driving, uh, you can completely operate the radio, change frequencies, change channels, change modes, uh, anything you want. So it's quite handy. Okay, so um, getting back to the VIX system. Um, as I mentioned in the classroom portion of this video, the order of these cables are very important. So at the bottom, the, F the, the, the master control station has two highway cables in and out. The bottom one... Uh, and, and you just make a ring, you can make a, you can make a branch, you can do a lot of different things, but it has to be in and out and in and out. Uh, so here, uh, at the bot, we've got a, a bottom connector and a top connector. The bottom connector goes all the way over to this crew station, in which case it enters into the left side, uh, and it terminates there. There's, there's no more highway cable uh, connected to that. Uh, on the top, this goes over to the right, and connects to the left of this crew station. And then out of the, this side, the left side of the crew station, is the highway cable that continues on to that RIT terminal, a second RIT terminal. Uh, so I just wanted to show you uh, starting this thing up. So let's turn it off 
which by the way, it turns off all of the radios. Um, you're wondering if I can get a, probably can get a shot of that. So uh, it's very convenient that this has uh, the ability to turn radios on and off. You always get in the car, forget to turn your radios on, so you don't have to stop the car, pull over, run into the back and turn them on. So um, you just turn it on. Uh, it goes through a self-test, it says pass. Um, let's put it in all mode. Uh, and then if, uh, let's see if I can show you, I'm gonna turn it off again. And let's see if I can show you it actually turning things on here. Uh, I don't know what you can see, but it did turn some things on. Okay, well, we'll keep going. Um, what I also next wanted to show is adding, so the, 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 the whole topography of these VIC-3 systems require it to learn your topography because there's all kinds of ways you can do it. You could do a ring, uh, you can do um, a, a straight line, you can do two halves, kind of like what I've done, splitting the, the highway in half. And every time you add either a new cruise station or a new uh, RIT terminal or anything like that, you've got to, it has to be retaught, has to relearn the topography. And it took me a little while to figure this out, but some uh, friendly folks on one of the mill radio forums helped me out a lot. So uh, the idea here is you turn it off, and I'll actually do this for you. You hold this in, in store mode. Uh, at the same time, I only have one hand, you hold change, and then you turn it on to all uh, here. And let me, I'll do that. Uh, I'll try to do that. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay, and now watch the display. The display goes through some things. It says config, you could let go. 1C, 2C, AC, BC, DC, e, uh, DC, EC. What this, FC, what this all means, 1C, 2C, 1 and 2 are crew station 1 and crew to station 2. Uh, and they are set, the addresses are set through this little, uh, use a little jeweler screwdriver here. Um, and you can set it from one through six or eight. I forget exactly what. Uh, and same thing with this. We set this to, sorry about the thumb. We set this to address two on the bottom. And so one C, two C means that one and two are connected successfully. Uh, and then you, you will recall, you, you also saw, um, let me, let me do this again. Uh, you, let me sure I do this again. Okay, you also will see 1C, 2C, they're connected, C means connected, A, B, C, D, E, F. Those refer to the radios. So the numbers are the crew stations, the letters are the radios. Uh, a and B, A and B radios are actually able to be connected directly here to the master control station. You see A and B, and here are the connectors. And then uh, C, D, and E, F represent the two RIT boxes and the two radios for each of those. Um, so let's go ahead and let's uh, let's modify it and let's see what happens. I'll show you this. Okay, so what we're, what we're trying to do here is we want to add another uh, crew station in the back here because we want to be able to operate in the back uh, any radio, listen to any radio, work any radio without needing uh, you know four different microphones, speakers all over the place. Uh, it just kind of tidies things up, makes it uh, makes a nice working system out of it. So what we're going to do, uh, and, and on this we've got a little uh, a little handset. Here is the highway cable going into it, and uh, you'll notice again it's going in the left side because that is the inside, in. And what we want to do is we want to connect it to this RIT terminal, the output of the highway highway connector. It's gonna go here. You see the one coming in and this is gonna go out. So I'm just gonna to pause to connect that. Okay, so uh, we've now connected the cable. So we've got a highway cable coming in, a highway co cable coming out, and going right into this, uh, this uh, crew station here with the handset so we can operate back here. Now, ultimately, uh, I'm going to mount this crew station and instead of a handset, I'm gonna use a speaker and a handset um, which gives me the option to either make it loud so I don't have to be with uh, right next to the handset or whatever. 
Uh, so let's see, let's go around back and, and let's see what happened. Let's go around the front. Okay, so we're gonna turn this on and what you're gonna see is it's gonna show an error. And that error is because there is an unknown cruise station that was attached. Test, fail. 3C, it's saying, oh, there's something called three that's connected, but it's not authorized. See, three has been connected. Uh, we, I will mention that we did add, uh, we set that third cruise station in the back to address three. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go through that same relearn process we did before. I'm gonna turn this off. Let's put, hold the store and change. Same time, and then with this hand, uh, okay. So it's going now for config, you'll see one connected, two connected, and now it's three connected, and then of course all the, the radios and uh, connected as well. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's how you add, I'm gonna go back. Uh, that's how you add anything, whether it's a cruise station, an RIT, or even something called an MOS, which is a, a monitor only station. Uh, and so let's go back and see what happened. All right, so uh, this is now connected. Um, I'll turn it up nice and loud. And uh, it, right now it's monitoring radio B, which is nothing connected to B. But we've got the Singars as radio C. And so we can uh, hear something. I, I turn the squelch off. Normally you leave it in this position, which is squelch on. This is squelch off. And uh, if you can, hopefully you can hear from the handset here. Let's listen to Radio C. Oh yeah, there it is. And uh, if I switch this to squelch on, you hear the the noise goes the, the noise goes away, and I switch it the, the squelch back off. You, hear it. you could now you could also not only C, D, E, and F, nothing's happening, but you could say monitor all. So if you have, it literally can monitor all your radios that are that are uh, receiving traffic. We'll just set it back to C for now, and you'll also see that I, I that I can transmit. Uh, and so you'll see if you look at there's no antenna on this, but if you look at the signal level here, you'll see test test. No, well, I don't I don't see that, but uh, but it is working uh, as I've tested all this before. Uh, and so uh, that's kind of the basics. I'm going to do another video uh, showing uh, to, to prove that it's all working with different radios and these things set on different frequencies um, so you can see how it all works and how you can monitor multiple radios and multiple frequencies uh, and then switch between them to operate. So I think that concludes the video for today. Uh, we'll be making other videos in the near future. Uh, I'll do one on the DC power distribution uh, and I'll do one on, um, uh, on the engine, which we did an engine swap for this, uh, to make it, uh, workable on a highway as well as, uh, some other fun things that we've done to it. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and, um, thank you for watching on the Vic 3 system. Have a good day.